Welcome to the Enlightenment Academy, where the journey of discovering your inner magic begins. In a world filled with endless possibilities, we invite you to explore the depths of your being and unlock the mysteries of your true potential. Through insightful teachings, transformative practices, and enlightening conversations, we empower you to access the brilliance that resides within you. Join us as we embark on a path of self-discovery, empowerment, and spiritual awakening. Are you ready to tap into the infinite wellspring of magic within you? Here is your host, Venus Castleberg. Hello, amazing beings. How are you today? Welcome to the Enlightenment Academy. Happy to be here with you. Today, I wanted to talk about embracing vulnerability as a pathway to authentic connections. As somebody who, well, let's just say, I spent most of my life trying to be perfect, trying to fit in, trying to look good, avoid looking bad. Uh, I did it all. <laughs> And what I found was it really didn't matter what other people thought of me anyway. Even though I tried so hard to make sure everybody liked me and nobody was judging me. Only to find out or realize that it's not their life, it's my life. So how many lives, how many others' lives are you living like? How much are you hiding your gifts and capacities and your superpowers because you would be too different or too weird? And would you be willing to let that go? Destroy and uncreate it. Right, wrong, good, bad, puck, pot, all nine shorts, boys, poets, meons. And that's the clearing statement. It's from Access Consciousness. And you can find out more information at theclearingstatement.com. But it's just kind of like a magic eraser. Energies come up. And then we do the clearing statement to erase them, to clear them out. And to basically start with a blank slate, to start with a clean whiteboard or clean chalkboard, if you remember what those are. <laughs> I might be dating myself. I don't know if they actually have chalkboards in schools anymore. I don't think they do. I think they're all whiteboards. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I digress. <laughs> so today let's start with our deepest barriers down, even the ones we don't know about. This has been the biggest key for me in vulnerability and being willing to be connected and aware of everyone and everything all around me all at once. Because we are, we're psychic Spongebobs. We are aware of so much more than we give ourselves credit for, but we've erected these uh, imaginary walls, these things that we think keep us protected and safe. But in actuality, they just keep us separate. They don't keep us safe from anything. And they keep us from being fully aware of like what's going on around us or what, you know, of the spirit realm are you aware of? Are you aware of, you know, somebody in your life that's struggling right now? But when we have these walls and barriers up, it's actually harder to perceive that energy, to be aware of what's going on out there in the real world, I guess. <laughs> so just try it. And don't worry, you created them, so if you want to pick them back up, you can. But just try and see. What does it feel like with your deepest barriers down, even the ones you don't know about? And yeah, you might feel a little vulnerable at first. You might feel a little bit exposed. And... What's right about that? <laughs> Have you ever noticed when somebody has no walls and barriers and there's no reason to fight or defend, or they're not trying to prove anything, 
how much more at ease you feel around those people. The people who really want you to win, the people who really appreciate your gifts and capacities, the people who acknowledge the gifts that you are in the world. Have you ever noticed that those people really don't have any walls and barriers? They don't have a reason to defend. They are just there, present with you, warts and all. Meaning, they're willing to show their flaws, to show people that maybe they don't have it all together or all figured out. And I know this can be a challenging thing, especially in the psychic medium realm or spiritual realm in general. Because we all have superpowers and capacities. In my um, point of view, we all have the ability to tap into our superpowers, to be psychic mediums, to share our gifts with the world. <laughs> and those gifts can be any number of things. But I really truly do believe in superpowers and that you have them. They might look a little different than what you've seen on TV, but you do have gifts and capacities that maybe you've never even acknowledged. And when I talk about vulnerability, I don't actually mean this is about throwing up on people or telling everybody your truth or feeling like you have to tell everybody everything. That's not what I mean at all. If you've ever been around somebody who's being truly vulnerable, they don't have anything to say. They don't have anything to prove. They are just them. And they're like, okay, I'm here. And that's all. They don't have, they don't have to defend that. Or they don't have to tell everybody their truth so that they can prove that they're being vulnerable. <laughs> that's not vulnerability. True vulnerability is just being you everything you are and everything you are not without a point of view about who you are or how you're showing up in the world or that you're different than everybody else. There's this great misconception that somehow we're supposed to be the same as everyone else. Well, how boring would that be? Isn't it awesome that you get to be uniquely you and everybody else gets to be uniquely them. And we aren't a bunch of clones wandering around, <laughs> looking like each other, acting like each other. Now, don't get me wrong, there's still a lot of people out there still trying to pretend like they're everybody else. I did that too for a really long time. I was like, oh, that person's got some success in their life. Maybe I'll go do it like them or that person's got some followers. Maybe I'll go do it like them. <laughs> or that person seems to be a pretty powerful psychic medium. Maybe I'll go do it like them. <laughs> and I'll just tell you, it's you, nobody in the world is ever going to be able to do it the way that you do it. And you're never really going to be able to do it the way they do it. Whatever it is. This is a very... A kind of a more general conversation because you can take this to every area of your life, right? Vulnerability is often what changes relationships. The willingness to be like vulnerable and say, hey, this isn't working for me right now. How this is going right now, it's not working. And that acknowledgement, that willingness to be vulnerable and acknowledge when something isn't working is the foundation to being able to change it. So if you want better relationships in your life, being vulnerable with where you are inside of that relationship. And this can be a relationship with beings with bodies. And this could also be a relationship with beings without bodies. Have you ever like thought about like when you're trying to connect with your spirit guides 
and the connection seems fuzzy or you're not able to really connect with them for some reason. What if you were able to just acknowledge like, hey, for some reason I'm not able to connect. Is there something that we can do here to change that connection? But that willingness to just be like, hey, something's not working. Can we change it? Not from I'm doing something wrong, right? The judging yourself because it's not working. You must be doing something wrong. No. What if there's just an acknowledgement of something? So a great example is um, I have some amazing ladies and gentlemen that work for me. And um, one of them was changing, kind of changing some back end stuff, right? With the offer. And the offer kept going to like this old ancestors call and wouldn't update to the new offer. And she was like, I don't know what's going on. And then she just kind of looked at it and she went, okay, so anywhere where I'm not willing to acknowledge my ancestors right now or any of the ancestors that need acknowledgement, I acknowledge you. And her willingness to just ask a question and look at it and, and look at it from a different point of view, then suddenly it started working, right? But we're so often not willing to look because we're so afraid that we're going to be wrong or that somehow we did something wrong. What if nothing you chose at any point was right or wrong, good or bad? It was just a choice. And those choices allowed you to gain awareness about what was working and what wasn't working. And then if something's not working in your life, you can choose something different. But vulnerability is like acknowledging when something's not working. That's vulnerability. Vulnerability isn't, like I said, throwing up on people and just being like, I have to tell everybody my truth. <clears throat> not necessarily. And I, I caution people, especially people in the psychic realm, Really, if you're going to be sharing stuff about your gifts and capacities, share it with people that have your back. Not people you think that have your back, but people that you know have your back. Because the people you think have your back might actually surprise you and not, right, and judge you. But share it with people who will celebrate you and who will uplift you and be there for you. And then you'll feel more empowered to share and more empowered to let your light shine. I love that poem by Nelson Mandela. Let your light shine. Who are you to be brilliant, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You were, I'm paraphrasing, but you were born to make manifest the glory of God. It's not just in some of us, it's in all of us. You were born to it. let your light shine. Right? And that, sh that shining your light can be vulnerable because sometimes people want to dim your light or they get uncomfortable around your light because it's too much. It's different for them. It makes them look at where, where they're not shining their light. But what if it was just shine your light, be you exactly the way you are and exactly the way you're not? And give everybody permission to do the same, to be themselves exactly the way they are and exactly the way they're not. I don't know about you, but I, I used to hide my gifts and capacities from the greater world. I also used to hide kind of like my, my struggles and things I was going through. And then I went and I wrote a book and I basically put all my secrets in a book and I published it. One of the most freeing things I've ever done. Now, I notice that when I write, write a book, I'm, I'm not forcing my points of view on somebody. But now, if somebody wants to, they can buy my book and learn all my secrets. And But then it's a choice, right? I'm not, like, forcing them to, to think like I think or to see things the way I see things or to have the same experiences. But for them to, like, go, oh, you know what? You can write a book. You can read a book and find out a lot more. And then from there, I was like, okay, I'm a little bit more exposed. I'm a little bit more vulnerable. 
I even did a podcast for a couple of years um, on being naked and it was all about vulnerability. And I realized during that actually that I really had no idea what vulnerability was. And that was part of why I created the podcast was because it was a, it was a discovery. It was an adventure. It was a journey <laughs> to finding out what vulnerability really truly was for me. And also just, I did a lot of great interviews and, and got to hear what vulnerability was to other people. But isn't it great that vulnerability can be, it? the word itself can be what works for you, what's true for you. And then the willingness to be seen, to unhide your light, to, and you know what, I am just as guilty of this, but I know a lot of us have this tendency to think, if I don't let my light shine, or I don't expose myself, if I just stay hidden, then people won't judge me. Guess what? They're already judging you anyway. <laughs> so you're free. <laughs> Go be free. Because you're trying to avoid people's judgments and they're already judging you. Whether they're judging you as good or bad or right or wrong, it doesn't matter. They're still judging you. So if suddenly you come out of the closet and decide that, you know, um, I use coming out of the closet and this, I mean, no disrespect this way, but it is kind of similar when you're a psychic medium and you're not telling anybody you're a psychic medium. And then you kind of come out of the closet to like expose yourself to the world as a psychic medium. And a lot of us are afraid I was too of being called crazy of being thought of as the crazy lady of people not liking me of people. Um, I can't tell you, I probably once a day get somebody telling me I'm going to hell or I'm of the devil or I um, actually it's not as often anymore, which is also interesting because I think when you're, when you don't, believe that stuff and you know that it's just people's points of view and it's not actually true for you, then it doesn't circle around you. But you'll get people's judgments when what they say you actually believe on some level. So <clears throat> now that that's, um, that energy is not around me so much, but it's like, I think it's really interesting because all those people that have ever judged me as evil or of the devil or invoking demons or whatever, that none of them actually know who I am. None of them. So why do I care? And I don't, by the way, but I used to. Why did I care what they thought of me? Especially if they don't know me. They've never talked to me. They don't know who I am. They don't know what I'm about. I actually have a Facebook group and a lot of you are on that Facebook group now, um, all about empowering psychic mediums. It's for people to feel empowered and safe. And like, maybe they're crazy, maybe they're a little different, but you know what? The whole group's a little different. <laughs> 2,300 people at this point. Um, and how does it get better than that? <laughs> So everybody's got their own kind of what you would call crazy. <laughs> but what if it's not really crazy? It's just awareness. It's just knowledge. It's just what's true for them. And in this group, I, I love watching people share like what they're going through and how everybody steps in and contributes. And I always encourage people in the group um, to not judge to not cast a stone, um, even if what somebody says is not true for you, you don't have to judge them or put them down because it's like, again, vulnerability can be challenging for many people, the willingness to be exposed, to tell their secrets. And if that's the case, then you know, I really encourage people in this group to be nice to each other, 
to not judge each other, even if their beliefs don't make sense to you. They may not make sense to you, but that's their beliefs. And I don't challenge people's beliefs because I don't know what their experience is. That's their experience. That's not my experience. Well, I think I mentioned it before, but I've, I've met Jesus twice in reincarnated in two different people. Who am I to say that that wasn't true? I don't know. It's true for them, right? So, but how am I, like, who am I to say, no, you weren't? I don't know, <laughs> right? All I know is my journey, and I know my past, and I know some of my lifetimes. I haven't gone back and explored all of them, but I've, I've definitely done some of them, and it's interesting to know where I came from and what sort of energies I have in me and around me, but that's my journey, right? So, so what if nobody gets you or nobody understands you or nobody believes you? All the only person that needs to believe you is you. And again, when you're truly being vulnerable, you're being you, warts and all, without a point of view about how you're showing up for somebody or what they're going to think about you. Like true vulnerability is just being you. <clears throat> I don't know. I, I love the idea of that in the world. If there was just more people willing to be themselves, not caring what anybody else thought, and sharing their gifts when people need them or asking for them, but just being willing to be different, to be weird, to be you. And what a gift, what an invitation to be that light, to be a legacy of light for others, showing people that being the light isn't in danger. If anything, it's more welcome now than it ever has been before. All right, so... Just in case you didn't know, <laughs> they are no longer uh, burning witches at the stake or crucifying people on crosses, right? So, so the things that we often fear are also irrelevant in this lifetime. Sure, you're going to have people that think you're crazy. You're going to have people that don't like you because they're uncomfortable around you. That's all, right? They're not, they don't not like you because of who you are as a person. They just are uncomfortable with what you can do. I can't tell you how many people I meet that, that they're like, can you read my mind? And I'm like, probably, but I'm not going to. I don't want to. <laughs> like, I don't, even if I had the ability to read everybody's mind, like, oh my God, that would be so noisy all the time. So I'm like, no, thank you. I don't need to do that. Even if I had the capacity, I wouldn't do it, right? Um, I'm also a clairvoyant medium, which means I see spirits, but I, but I don't have it on all the time. Otherwise, I'd be like talking to somebody and then be like, wow, what's that? You know, be all over the place. So, but that doesn't mean I deny my gifts either, right? I'm willing to say I'm a psychic medium. I'm willing to be that. Even if people don't get it or like me or understand it. Because that's just part of who I am. That's not all of who I am, but that's part of who I am, right? And yeah, um, I'm... Do I have bad days? Sure. Do I not feel well sometimes? Sure. Like that's the other thing too. It's like I don't pretend to have it all together all the time anymore. Oh man, did I ever. I used to. I used to really try to show up as perfect and like not willing to let anybody see my flaws or my wrinkles or whatever. I don't know. Like random, random silly stuff. And then I just got to an age where I was just like, you know what? I don't really care <laughs> like what people think of me. It's my life. And maybe that's a good question for you to be asking for yourself is when do you start living your life for you 
and stop living everybody else's, your life for everybody else. Or as everybody else's points of view about how you should live. <laughs> One of the things that I also used to do was I used to um, try to make my dad happy. So, and so I wouldn't do things that I thought would make my dad unhappy. Well, my dad died when I was 18. So I was essentially trying to keep a guy that was dead happy. Now, don't get me wrong, spirits, of course, you know, yes, they can have joy and sadness and all that stuff. That's true. But really, am I going to live my life according to what I think, think my dad would have wanted? And I don't even know anymore because he hasn't been around for 30 years. Interesting, huh? So my invitation to you today, especially if you're desiring deeper connections in your life with people with bodies and with people without bodies, is to just be willing to be vulnerable, to be yourself, to not worry about what anybody else thinks, and show up as you and see what that might create in your life. I know for me, it's created a lot more joy and ease and fun. And I guess in a lot of ways, a lot more relaxation. Because you know how much anxiety we suffer from when we're trying to make everybody else happy. The only person that you can truly make happy is you. So go be you and be happy. Whatever that takes. I hope you found some value in this. We're going to take a short break and then we're going to come back and do a guided visualization on being your true self. I look forward to seeing you soon. Sometimes TV. Imagine becoming a super influencer. Reinvent yourself, invest in your brand, and then manifest your success with a robust spheric approach. Ohm Times Media and Broadcasting offers a unique and multifaceted way to become the spiritual and conscious influencer you deserve to be by putting your message across our powerful platform with its proven record of integrity and excellence. Through our produced shows, Ohm Times offers the opportunity to become a social media TV personality, a radio show host, an Ohm Times Magazine columnist, and a syndicated podcaster, all in one shot. By live streaming your show on Ohm Times TV and broadcasting it across the extensive Ohm Times radio and TV networks, you become more than a host. You become an ambassador and a force for positive change. Ohm Times, open yourself to the possibilities. If I could be you, and you could be me for just one hour. If we could find a way to get inside each other's minds. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk, Walk a, a mile, mile in my, my shoes. Well, before you abuse, criticize and accuse. Walk, Walk a mile in my shoes. Hello, everyone, and welcome forward to this little guided visualization. So go ahead and relax and close your eyes. Take some deep breaths. And relax. Breathe in. Exhale out. Breathe in. Exhale out. Breathe in. Exhale out. And just in case those walls and those barriers went back up, let's bring them back down.
and relax. Relax the body, relax the mind. Breathe in, exhale out, and relax. Imagine this beautiful golden light pouring down from the heavens, from the sky, like warm, honey, allowing this light to just pour over your body, covering you from the crown of your head down to the tips of your fingers, the tips of your toes. And just relax. Feel this energy and just let it relax every fiber, every cell of your body. Relax. Breathe in. Exhale out. And relax. Breathe in. Exhale out and relax. And then as if you could step out of the shell walls, the barriers. The ghillie suit, the camouflage, the all the things that you've used to hide yourself away. Why don't you just imagine yourself in your favorite calm, safe place. Could be inside or outside. Just know wherever you are, you're calm and safe. And that this is between you and you. I want you to just imagine yourself standing in front of a mirror. <clears throat> and then as if they could just melt away all the judgments, the points of view about your age, your body, how you look, just let all those judgments melt away and melt into the earth. And see all the walls and shells and protections and things that you've created to keep you separate and what you thought was keeping you safe. And just allow that to melt into the earth. To the earth, it's just energy. So you can give it to the earth and she'll transmute and transform it and use it for something that she needs it for, who wants it. as you let these layers of judgment melt away and these layers of walls and barriers 
ghillie suits and camouflage, just letting it all melt away. Any points of view that you have about yourself, about your body, about your gifts and capacities, just let those melt away as well. And then seeing all the points of view that you've carried around from others that maybe weren't even directed at you, but maybe your parents had gifts and capacities and they made themselves wrong and so you picked those up. Or you didn't want to be crazy, the crazy lady, so you know you didn't tell anybody that you had 10 cats. It is all the points of view that you block from society, from what's right and wrong, good and bad. Just let those melt away too. I want you to just begin to perceive this light being, this brilliant being that exists underneath. underneath all of those stuck points of view and all those belief systems, all those disabling and dishonoring thoughts about yourself. Any negative thoughts and beliefs that those melt away. Any judgment and comparison that you have on yourself to others let that melt into the earth and melt away. And as all this stuff is melting away, notice in the mirror how much brighter you see. How much more of your true self is shining through. And all the seriousness and the have tos and the shoulds. And just because you have gifts and capacities, you should be altruistic and use them and do good for others at the expense of yourself often. Can we let that go and not let it melt away? Allowing these layers and layers of judgments and negative beliefs, negative thoughts and points of view to just melt, melt into the earth, melt away. And anything else that's there that may be hindering you seeing your true self, just let that melt away as well. Let all that energy go back to the earth. Notice how much more radiant you are. Not radiant that you're becoming radiant that you already are, the brilliant, talented, fabulous being you already are, the abundant being, the super power being. The enlightened being the light being, the 
being that is ease, joy, and glory. the points of view you have about your flaws or even what you consider your flaws let that melt away what if every wrongness was actually one of your greatest strengths where are you strong that you've never acknowledged Where are you brilliant that you've never acknowledged? What can you be grateful for about you that maybe you've never been grateful for before? What are your talents and abilities? And how can you use them to your advantage? And anywhere where you made yourself wrong to using the gifts and capacities that were gifted to you that you have that it's not okay to use them to your advantage using them to your advantage doesn't mean it's at the expense of anyone else it's just allowing yourself to be part of the equation you believe that you're here to help other beings and to contribute to other beings, that's awesome. But aren't you a being too? So letting it melt away everywhere where you haven't been willing to include yourself in the blessings and the receiving and the gifts. Letting any physical discomfort and pain melt away. Letting it go to the earth. She transforms and transmutes it. All the places where you had an awareness and it didn't turn out the way that you thought it was going to and you made yourself wrong because it didn't turn out the way you thought it was going to. But you let that go and melt that away as well. Everything, everything is working out for your highest good. It's all working out in your favor even when you can't see it. So if you want to stay hidden under a bushel, it's okay. The universe will use that to your advantage as well. You don't have to come out of hiding. You don't have to be exposed. You don't have to be seen. And I wonder what it would create if you did allow yourself to be seen. What an invitation that might be to others. But you're still not going if you choose not to. So letting the wrongness go, let that melt away. In all the places where you think it should be a certain way or you should be a certain way because somebody else said you should be a certain way, but you'd be willing to return the sender with consciousness attached. Right on the all night towards the voice of robots and hands. Turn to center all the points of view that were a lie, that were never true about you, and especially the ones that you block as real and true. 
this somebody else said that to you. And notice how much more relaxed you are. Just be you. You don't have the angst or that energy of fight or flight. You don't have to be on guard. And you can just be you. Who is that brilliant, powerful, amazing being that you see staring back at you in the mirror now. And maybe this, seeing this brilliant, talented, powerful being is just for you, just for fun. And it's not about telling anyone. But when you really start to be vulnerable with you, you really start to see you. It won't matter if other people see you. Because you see you. And how miraculous and marvelous that is that you see you. You get to be you. And how did the world get so lucky to have you in it? Because the world is lucky to have you in it. The world is blessed because you live on this planet. And I realize it may not be the way that you feel right now. Is trusting that you make a difference, that you belong here. That you are a gift. And the only person on the entire planet that needs to get that is you. Because like I said, when you get that about you, when you have your own back, when you're vulnerable and real with yourself, it won't matter if anybody else understands you, trusts you, or believes that you're real. You believe you're real. You believe you're true. You trust you. What a beautiful gift that is gift of being you. Without all those points of view, without the right and the wrong and the judgment. And some people will get it, some people will go with you, and many won't, most won't. And that's okay. Because you have you. And you get to be you. And then the people that are mean and judgmental and have lots of points of view, just remember, 
people will always blame you for what they themselves are doing or for what they themselves are struggling with. So if somebody calls you a witch or calls you the devil, guess what they think about themselves? They actually believe themselves to be of the devil. And when you have that kind of awareness, it just frees you up to have a lot more compassion for people. Because they must think that they are innately evil for them to be projecting that on you. And everywhere where you bought that you were evil, bad, and wrong from anyone from any lifetime, You didn't do anything wrong. In every lifetime, you did the best you could with the tools that you had. And in many lifetimes, protecting yourselves and having walls and barriers and hiding was completely appropriate. Maybe that's appropriate with this life for you. And maybe it's not. Just ask a question. Is it creating the life and living I desire to have by hiding my light? Or would shining as bright as I truly am create the life and living I desire to have? The choice is up to you. ideas are up to you, the possibilities are up to you, the choice is yours. You can choose to hide, that's okay, and you can choose to be vulnerable. And let people know who you truly are. But maybe it's not about letting anybody else know who you truly are. It's just about you acknowledging who you truly are to you. Some of you are angels here on earth. Some of you are goddesses. Some of you are ancient beings. Some of you are ascended masters. Some of you are beings of light. Some of you are archangels. Some of you are elementals and spirits and sprites and fairies and elves, nymphs, all of it. Be you and change the world. Dr. Dane here wrote an amazing book called Be You and Change the World. Being you and changing the world. I highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. Take a couple of deep breaths in. Breathe in. Exhale out. Breathe in. Exhale. Maybe rubbing your hands together or rubbing your hands on your thighs. And slowly and gently opening your eyes, bringing yourself back to the present moment or forward to the present moment.
And breathe in and exhale out. And just perceive, did you come back a little lighter? There's no right or wrong answer. But shedding all those layers that are no longer serving you. Be a little bit more present to the magical gift that you are. And maybe you can't put words to it, but maybe you just maybe you feel a little bit lighter, a little bit more at ease. I highly recommend listening to that one again and again and again. Because every time you can get a little bit more of the magical, brilliant, talented, and fabulous being that you are. Grateful for you. See you next time.